Don't you hate that? Hate what? Uncomfortable silences. Why do we feel it's necessary to yak about bullshit in order to be comfortable? Formerly innovative, intensely suspenseful, beautifully violent. Since its release in 1994, Pulp Fiction has earned its spot in the pantheon of great American movies, with some critics lauding it as the best film ever made. Quentin Tarantino's masterpiece is the story of the trials and tribulations of a network of gangsters in Los Angeles, focusing on three main characters, Vincent Vega, Jules Winfield, and Butch Coolidge. This second effort by the now decorated director contains many of the hallmark tropes that have cemented him as one of the greatest American filmmakers of our generation. Snappy dialogue, cutting pop culture references, and extreme violence. Pulp Fiction, at its surface, may seem like a simple movie about organized crime. However, looking beyond the surface, the movie contains an intense critique of American society, attacking the nihilistic attitude that Tarantino saw sweeping the nation in the 1990s. In this video, I would like to explore how Tarantino uses the fragmented narrative structure of Pulp Fiction to highlight the misguided nihilistic mood of the nation, and specifically how he uses words and the English language to emphasize the meaninglessness in these characters' lives. Hey kids, how you boys doing? Tarantino's thesis on American society and the wrong-headed nature of nihilism is perfectly reflected in the character arcs of Vincent Vega and Jules Winfield. At the opening of the film, these two men represent Americans who buy into the idea that life is meaningless. They have no moral framework and obsess over trivial pop culture facts as they drive to execute a hit. The brutal yet nonchalant murders of Brett and his associates highlights that these men see no value in life. Furthermore, the reason they kill Brett is to retrieve a briefcase for their boss, Marcellus. This briefcase is vitally important to Tarantino's attempt to display the lack of a god figure in the modern, nihilistic world. When the briefcase is opened, a yellow heavenly light appears, conveying that this item is their god. They are willing to kill for it and will not let anyone take it from them. However, the viewer never sees what is inside the briefcase and there is truly no meaning behind it. The briefcase acts as a false idol, a false god, that wrongfully motivates their actions. The fact that the code to unlock the briefcase is 666 further showcases the empty and immoral lifestyle these men, and most Americans, are living in the 1990s. Vincent! You happy? Yeah, we happy. One of the most admirable aspects of Pulp Fiction is how Tarantino utilizes language to compound the meaninglessness we see in these characters' lives. This technique is seen from the beginning, in the first conversation between Jules and Vincent. You know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh man, they got the metric system, they wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it uh, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. This conversation plays around with the concreteness of language and the word quarter pounder. If words are interchangeable, then does language really mean anything? The two men leading their nihilistic lifestyles can't find solid meaning in anything, including language. We see a similar instance of a character unable to find meaning in language with Butch. Take this conversation he has with the taxi driver. Thank you. And what is your name? Butch. I'm an American, honey. Our names don't mean shit. Once again, to Butch, language and words have no meaning, consistent with the lifestyle he is living, where he is ripping off gangsters and going on the run. In a broader sense, Tarantino equates this lack of meaning in Butch's name to being an American phenomenon. This sentence is the crux of Tarantino's thesis on American nihilism in the 1990s. There is no meaning in America. Chronologically, a critical moment happens right after the shooting of Brett and his associates. Die, you this moment impacts Vincent Vega and Jules in two remarkably different ways. We should be fucking dead, man. I know we was lucky. No, 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 no. That shit wasn't luck. Yeah, maybe. This was divine intervention. 
Jewel sees it as a moment of divine intervention, an act of God, while Vincent Vega views it as simple luck. Jules finds religious meaning in this moment, and it convinces him to leave the gangster lifestyle. When Jules conveys this to Vincent in the diner, he dismisses it as foolish and claims Jules will be a bum if he leaves the lifestyle. Jules is focused on spiritual meaning, while Vincent Vega is focused on money and material things. Jules is going to abandon his nihilistic lifestyle, while Vincent is content as he is currently living. However, as this argument in the diner is going on, the audience ultimately knows who is right and where Tarantino stands due to the unique, fragmented formal structure of the movie. Tarantino's attempt to show the folly of the nihilistic lifestyle that Vincent is leading is augmented by the audience's knowledge of the future. Not only does the audience know that Vincent ends up being murdered because he ignored this sign and continued his criminal lifestyle, but they also see all of the times acts of God have affected Vincent's life since the diner conversation. For example, the incident where he accidentally shoots Marvin in the face as he says, well, You gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped- Oh, what the fuck's happening now? Is still fresh in the audience's mind. It could be argued that this is a clear act of God, especially considering the timing of the shot. When he buys heroin, his dealer places it in a baggie, which causes Mia to think it's cocaine. She snorts it and then overdoses. Vincent's drug dealer not having a balloon for the heroin is another random act of God that negatively affected Vincent. Allowing the viewer to have knowledge of these events undermines Vincent's argument against Jules about divine intervention. If this story was told in order, Tarantino's message about the flaws of the nihilistic lifestyle Vincent buys into may not be as clear. Viewers might not connect the ultimate death of Vincent Vega with the conversation about divine intervention. But by giving the viewers a window into the future, they can clearly see that Vincent Vega's refusal to give in to a bigger belief system and continue his nihilistic lifestyle will ultimately lead to his demise. This allows Tarantino to get across his larger message about modern society. It is established at the beginning that both Vincent and Jules are representative of the flaws of contemporary America. They discuss pop culture and have no clear moral code. Jules grows out of this, but Vincent never does. The ultimate fate of Vincent's character reflects Tarantino's thoughts on the negative consequences that will arise from this nihilistic worldview on America. Coinciding with the evolution of these characters is a newfound understanding of language. Take this scene from Jules in the diner at the end of the movie after his epiphany. Read the Bible, Ringo? Not regularly, no. Well, there's this passage I got memorized. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. I've been saying that shit for years. And if you heard it, that meant your ass. I never gave much thought to what it meant. I just thought it was some cold-blooded shit to say to a motherfucker before I popped a cap in his ass. I saw some shit this morning made me think twice. See, now I'm thinking, maybe it means you're the evil man and I'm the righteous man. And Mr. Nine Millimeter here He's the shepherd protecting my righteous ass in the valley of darkness. Or it could mean you're the righteous man and I'm the shepherd. And it's the world that's evil and selfish. Now, I'd like that. But that shit ain't the truth. The truth is you're the weak and I'm the tyranny of evil men. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. Religious language that previously didn't have meaning when he was unenlightened now not only has meaning but guides his decision making. In some ways, language acts as the godlike figure that society is lacking, which now guides jewels to morality. Butch, who undergoes a similar transformation when he decides to save Marcellus, also acknowledges the meaning of language in this scene. It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. The word chopper has a set meaning, and it is no longer okay to substitute words and render language meaningless. 
Tarantino uses language as a sign of the fruitful evolution of these characters to a more enlightened lifestyle. Tarantino's use of language and form in Pulp Fiction is masterful. The spiritual, almost religious undertones of the movie may surprise many viewers at first glance. However, Tarantino's harsh social commentary on the American lifestyle is one of the many reasons Pulp Fiction is considered to be one of the greatest accomplishments in cinematic history. Show you never can tell They furnished off an apartment